You are listening to the Wealth Formula Podcast with Buck Joffrey. Get ready to change your life. Welcome, everybody. This is Buck Joffrey with the Wealth Formula Podcast coming to you from Montecito, California. And uh, today, uh, before we begin, I just want to remind you, uh, there are lots of resources at uh, wealthformula.com. It's also where you go to sign up for our various lists, including our accredited investor club. Uh, I do encourage you to consider joining that as we have lots of opportunities this year that are very different. They are truly a much more of a diverse private equity type offering that you'd see, you know, that typically you would see uh, from a family office or something like that, uh, whether that's in aviation, uh, mergers and acquisitions, and of course, real estate with uh, only the top-notch group out there. Anyway, check it out for yourself. Go to wealthformula.com, sign up for the list. Uh, as for today's show, let's talk a little bit about, uh, I guess we're going to talk a little bit about social security scams and so-called retirement planning. Now, this is always a tricky one for me because I don't like the word retirement. The word retirement to me, well, I mean, not just to me, but what does it mean? It means ceasing to work. In my case, I think it'll be relevant to describe me when I'm dead. I understand retiring from a, a particular activity, like say, for example, I used to be a surgeon and I retired from surgery about eight years ago. But global retirement sounds dire. It's like admitting that you're of no value to the world anymore, that your contributions are no longer a benefit to humanity. Now, I've always believed that the universe ultimately pays you what you deserve. I really do believe that. I think the universe will pay you what you deserve to get paid. And if all you're doing is playing golf, you really aren't worth a dime anymore, are you? And imagine what gets me is all that knowledge, expertise, and wisdom that you accumulate over the years. So much of it is sitting in the retirement section. You know, uh, you're not going to waste all that knowledge, are you? All that expertise? You got to figure out how to keep it going, how to use it, how to spread that information and wisdom that you've accumulated. And frankly, that's, you know, well, that's my philosophy. And as you know, uh, I have a podcast on health and longevity called Sapio with Buck Joffrey, which you should check out, by the way. From that perspective, I want us all to feel like 50, which, you know, somebody might have just turned fairly recently, is just the beginning. And I don't mean the beginning of the end. Now, what I'm saying here, folks, is get inspired. Dreams are not for the young. As Bill Gates actually put it, People grossly overestimate what they can accomplish in a year and grossly underestimate what they can accomplish in five. Anyway, that's uh, that's my rant for today. So let's go back to reality. This is obviously a personal finance show and we need to talk about stuff like, you know, how do you make sure you get money when you get older? One of those sources is going to be Social Security. Uh, for most people, maybe not those who are listening to this show, that is going to be one of the primary sources of income. To be honest, I don't know much about Social Security. Uh, I didn't know much about security, so I thought I would interview someone on this topic and help you learn as well. So this week on Wealth Formula Podcast, uh, I got a guy who was on 60 Minutes recently, uh, who was uh, uncovering social security scams. So I thought he might be a good person to listen to. So when we come back, learn everything you need to know about social security and the scams to avoid. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Today, my guest on Wealth Formula Podcast is uh, Professor Larry J. Kotlikoff. He is a New York Times bestselling author, uh, William Fairfield Warren, professor at Boston University, Professor of Economics at Boston University, a fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, a fellow of the Econometric Society, a research associate of the National Bureau of Economic Research, and president of the Economic Security Planning Incorporated, a company specializing in financial planning software. And uh, he is the author of 21 books, including Social Security horror stories, and money magic, which we will be talking about today. Professor Kotlikoff, welcome to Wealth Formula Podcast. Uh, great to be with you. Thanks so much, Buck, for having me. So um, let's start with this. You know, it was uh, 
you know, the when when the producer brought this up, I thought, you know, this is interesting because you wrote a book about Social Security. And now most of my audience are they're doing pretty well. Uh, they're probably not planning on living off of Social Security. But it occurred to me that a lot of people, you know, this is a this is a financial education show. And a lo- when I came out of residency, honestly, I didn't really even know what Social Security was. And I dare say that there are probably people out there who don't really even understand where so- what Social Security is, where it came from, what the intent was. And I'm wondering if you might give us a little tutorial on that for and catch everybody up. Well, first of all, uh, for probably, you know, uh, 20% of American households, Social Security is it in terms of, the, you know, they got Social Security in their house. And then for about half of um, American households, I'm talking about people in their retirement uh, stage, uh, Social Security is financially the... Uh, either the first or second largest asset. And for your listeners who are probably somewhat higher upper income, uh, it's probably the second or third largest asset, but it's a huge asset. Uh, the, the higher earners have the most uh, to gain from in, in absolute dollars from collecting Social Security properly. And a lot of people are taking Social Security far too early. Three quarters of households are taking Social Security before the full retirement age, their full retirement age, about 30% are taking it as soon as they can get it uh, at age 62. And if you wait till 70, your benefit is 76% higher adjusted for inflation. So this is like a fantastic return. Uh, We're just being patient with this system produces an enormous payoff so I wrote a, I have a, in my software company, we have a tool for 39 bucks called Maximize My Social Security. And it does just social security optimization, lifetime optimization. And we use this program to run a big Federal Reserve data set through it and see whether people were making the right decisions. And we found that the typical loss of lifetime benefits was something like $182,000. That's the median. But we found at the very end, top, uh, we found a high income household was leaving close to a million bucks on the table because if both husband and wife are high earners, uh, if they take benefits at 62, we're talking about, uh, you know, both of them getting much, much less than if they waited till 70. So, and, uh, you know, you're dis- you want to discount these future benefits, which have to, you have to think about that. You're living to your maximum age of life because you might, you can't ignore longevity risk. And so this thing is really insurance, providing insurance up to, let's say age 100. So taking benefits from, you know, age 70 through 100 uh, that are much higher, discounting them at the proper rate of return, which would be the safe rate that you get could get on inflation index bonds, which are called TIPS, Treasury Inflation Protected Securities, discounting these benefits at around 2%, which is what these things are yielding right now. That can, that can yield you a very big number. Sure. So, so not about, getting such a story can be, could cost you up to a million, a million bucks, some of your listeners. Yeah, let's back up for a minute though. Like, so tell us the mechanics of, of when and how social security is, is, collected throughout our you know work life okay so we pay so the way this works it's i mean the thing is about as complicated as humanly possible there's 12 benefits that you can potentially collect uh like widow's benefits and spousal benefits and divorce widow's benefit divorce spousal benefit child and care spousal benefits disabled child benefits for disabled children lots of benefits and uh in addition to your own retirement benefit and what happens is you you go through life and you're paying uh, this FICA tax and your employer is taking uh, every, you know, paycheck, taking some money uh, and sending it over to Social Security. And, you know, it's sending basically two pieces of your earnings. One, it calls its own contribution. The other calls or Congress calls its the employer's contribution. The other half the gov- uh, is called your contribution. But that's basically horseshit. Uh, it's all coming out of your pay. Sure. So the FICA tax for Social Security is 12.4% of your pay. So if you start 
to work and start earning money, let's say at 16, and you fast forward to maybe you retire at 65, all those years, every single penny you earn, 12.4% is going over to Baltimore to the Social Security headquarters. Now your earnings up to age 60 are indexed for the average wage growth in the economy. So uh, that adjusts for kind of general productivity growth of workers, as well as general wage inflation, which is connected to overall inflation. So th these wages, uh, these index wages up till age 60, plus the actual nominal wages after age 60 are uh, ranked from the top to bottom. You take the 35 highest, you take an average of that, divide by 12, and then you plug that into a formula that's called your primary insurance amount formula and out, out comes your um, full retirement benefit. Okay, so when okay, let's go back to so now that money's been collected out of your paycheck because I, again, I just want to go back and, and make sure people are understanding like what exactly is happening. You said it goes to the social security, uh, you know, it goes to this office. Are they investing that money? Where is it going? What doing is that, that's a, basically a scam. Uh, what they're doing is taking every every penny that you send them and handing it to older people. And younger, so it's a Ponzi uh, scheme, is what you're telling. It's a, it's a complete spot. Ponzi scheme has been from the beginning. The entire fiscal enterprise of the country is a Ponzi scheme. I don't want people to get the impression if I use that language that I'm a right winger uh, or that I don't have any basis for saying this. I'm a professional economist. Well, by definition, it's a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> <laughs> to, me, to me, it's a play, you know, play. I just want to take the politics out of this. Yeah, no, of course, of course. Okay. Because but, I'm not left wing or right wing. I'm just common sense. Sure, sure. And also, also an economist. So, right. it's big, you know, it's one of the, we have a unfunded liability in this system, 65.9 trillion, according to the, to the March 31st trustees report, which was released last year, uh, 65.9 trillion is more than twice official debt in the hands of the public. So, we're talking about a massive problem with the funding of Social Security because, uh, you know, the people that started running this said, well, you know, we'll give money to old people and then they'll have an opportunity to get take money from their kids and then their kids will be able to take money from their kids. And that's fine if you have enough kids coming along and if they're earning enough money. But um, counting on expropriating your children, you know, we're running out of that game. That game is uh, it's kind of getting to game over on that, but the entire fiscal policy of the country is predicated on this. It's not It's not like we just have an unfunded liability for Social Security. The entire, all the spending, Medicare, Medicaid, defense spending, the entire path of spending as projected by the Congressional Budget Office is um, far below the projected path of taxes. So our fiscal policy to be, to get us in line to be able to pay for all the benefit, all the spending, including the president's lunch and gassing up Air Force One that the CBO projects, we need to raise every single federal tax, corporate, personal, uh, excise taxes, FICA taxes by almost about 45% to pay for that mm -hmm. whole path in present value. So the country's broke. And nobody uh, on the political scene is describing ex how, you know, they're, they're not dis discussing this at all. They're, because, they're not discussing it in part. I mean, they used to. It used to be like sort of a, a you know, a, a, an issue for specifically for the Republican Party about talking about, you know, uh, Social Security and, and Medicare and Medicaid. But, but now there's, um, you know, there's no real mention of any sort of fiscal austerity on either side because it's politically unpopular, right? Yeah, I think part of it is a dumbing down of Congress. You know, you have uh, not a single member of Congress. There's 535 members who um, have a PhD in economics. Uh, you have a lot of lawyers and you have people that are highly politicized and, uh, you know, th you know, <laughs> They're publicity artists is what they are. I don't know yeah. what they are. Start some people yeah. when you, and then you also have people that are just on some kind of drugs. I mean, when you have a former president uh, saying that it's okay, don't worry about a shooting that has just killed your child, you know, get over it. Or I'm going to be a dictator as soon as I come into office for 
certain number of hours. So I'm going to sign all kinds of bills that have been or, or regulations mm-hmm. that are in front of me to to uh, rewrite the the country or to I you know or that yeah. I actually want actually when nobody thinks nobody else thinks in their right mind thinks you did. Uh, this is craziness. Uh, we have people that are mentally ill in Congress, left, right, and center, and that's part of where we're at. We're at, but for Social Security anyway. Once you figure out this PIA for you, uh, which is your primary insurance amount, your full retirement benefit, then benefit you can get benefits for your ki- disabled kids, your young kids, your your spouse. If 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 he or she has been a lower earner relative to you, and just a lower earner in absolute terms. Uh, your divorced spouse, if you were married for 10 years, uh, if you drop dead, your widow or your divorce, your ex-widow to whom you were married for 10 years, they can collect and haven't remarried before age 60, they can collect on your record. So there's, it's complicated. That's why we developed the software, 39 bucks, maximize my social security.com. We also have a full lifetime planning, uh, economics-based financial planning tool called Maxify Planner. I would say that for your listeners, mm-hmm. any of the, your listeners who aren't running Maxify.com, M-A-X-I-F-I.com, are making a big mistake because they're probably going to a financial planner who can't remotely figure out the kinds of things this program, uh, this program has a patent algorithm. Uh, I've developed it over 31 years. We use it for research. The Federal Reserve uh, uses it for research. The uh, National Institute of, of Health, NIA, the aging part of National Institute of Health, NIA, National Institute of Aging, the Sloan Foundation, Boston University, they've all... So, con- just, to, just to be clear, the the it, who should be using, I mean, like if, uh, you know, most of, most of my listeners probably right now are not of retirement age. Um, so you, you're talking about people who are um, your retirement age, or is there a reason you should be using this before that, or what? You should be using this at every age. You know, if you're a parent with a kid who's thinking about going to this college versus that college, this student one versus that, or this amount of, they should, everybody should be using it at every age because well, it works for every age. It's life cycle. And is it just cycle. about social security or is it just? So well, the Maxify planner is about everything. It's about okay. your entire financial picture, including your investments to understand the living standard risk you're facing if you invest this way. That way, if you spend aggressively along the way, uh, so it incorporates, uh, so it's really the, the most powerful financial planning tool. And your listeners are just exactly the kind of customers we have because they're do-it-yourselfers. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, they're, I mean, this is a very complex under the hood tool. It's amazingly complex. That's why I got a patent, which is very difficult to get for software methods. Uh, but Above the hood, it's as simple as running TurboTax. You just ask questions via wizard. So it's, you know, we have th- tens of thousands of, of users of this software uh, and uh, have gotten there with no advertising mm-hmm. because of just word of mouth. So Maxify.com, I would say, you know, I wrote this book called Money Magic. Uh, a couple of years, came out a couple of years ago. It was the, we ranked the, the top uh, book by business writers. I got the award for the best personal finance book of the year by the society of Cebu. It's the society of, uh, of all, you know, all the people that write for the different outlets like ABC news or CBS or CNBC sure. or Yahoo. They, they voted this the best book of the year. It's all about making money safely just using our software. Yeah. Without, you know, saying, you know like waiting till 70 to take social security and increasing your lifetime spending capacity by, let's say, a million bucks or a half a million bucks, uh, if if you're otherwise going to take it at 62 uh, or 200,000 bucks, depending on your circumstance, uh, that's completely riskless, right? Yeah. That's like a pile of money in a big bag on your front step when you wake up in the morning. Right. Why not just wait a few years to do it right if you don't? Now, if you think you're going to beat the market, by taking Social Security early, uh, you need to have your head examined because the return to waiting is so big and the market return is very high. So I'm not saying don't don't invest in the market, but realize that you need to risk adjust investing in the stock market because the stock market is a wild ride. That's why the average return on stocks is very high, like 
9% historically, but the risk, their average return, the return on safe assets is very low because that's the risk premium. Is there, so, um, you know, you hear people talk about the risk of that social security just won't be there for, for people who, you know, are, are currently in their forties or fifties, uh, that, that, you know, I mean, that it may not be so, there. Is that a real, in your mind, is that some, a, a real risk or what? That's, that, that's a real risk, especially I think for uh, higher income people that they, because the plans out there that are uh, more realistic than let's say Nikki Haley's idea of just raising retirement age, which will do bupkas for 65.9 trillion in terms of reducing the present value uh, projected out uh, fiscal gap in, in that system is just way too small, too late. It's just an, an indication of how financially or kind of policy illiterate uh, that this very intelligent person who I like a lot, to tell you the truth, as one of as among the Republican ca- candidates, but to come on stage and talk about doing this as a way to solve a massive problem you know, it's a, like a molehill on the mountain. Yeah. Uh, but could could it be cut? Absolutely. And does our software incorporate the ability to specify cuts in your benefits so that you can see whether taking it early in the context of future cuts is a good idea? It does. And uh, uh, in general, in general the, the gains from waiting are still very dramatic, even if you were talking about like a 25% benefit cut. You were on, uh, I believe you were on 60 Minutes and talking about your book, Social Security Horror Stories. What, what are we talking about here? Um, clawbacks and things like that? What uh, Scams? Can you can you tell us some of the, the stuff yeah. that... Uh, the that book's half about clawbacks, and then the second half in here is a picture of the claw. Yeah, <laughs> the claw yeah. It's a figurative thing that shows up in, a le- in the form of a letter. This claw is coming right out of a treasury check. Sure. Uh, and suppose you're, let's say, uh, we have 2 million people getting clawed back every year by Social Security, and it's for alleged overpayment of benefits. So maybe you're, uh, Buck, imagine that you're um, uh, 75 and that, you know, you know, here's an example. You might have worked for the state of Illinois as a teacher and mm-hmm. uh, not participated in Social Security. Uh, because they're exempt, uh, they've chosen not to be part of Social Security, and now you start collecting a pension from the teachers' association or teacher system. In and now, and you and you went in, let's say at sixty-two, and told Social Security, "I'm going to start. I'd like to start my benefit right away." And by the way, my pension is going to start coming in. And here's here's all the information about it. Here's the paperwork. And they say, fine, we're going to, and by the way, you need to take into account the fact that I'm getting this non-covered pension. So you're not, you need to lower my benefit. Oh, we know all about that. Don't worry. Uh, And you start collecting your check. And then maybe 20 years later, when you're 70, 82, you get a hundred thousand dollar bill in the mail. That's the clawback. And they said, well, over all these, and, and after two years, they won't explain why you're being clawed back. But after two two years, uh, you can finally end up in front of an administrative judge and find out the explanation because there's no due process. It's not like they're required to explain anything. Right. Uh, nor do they have any documentation <clears throat> of anything that they're deciding. You just get this thing, a computer generated bill, uh, letter. You owe one hundred and three thousand dollars. Right. And if you don't pay it, by the way, if you don't pay it within four weeks, we're going to stop your benefit completely. Right. You might be living at that point primarily or largely on social security, uh, or it might be an important part of your, you know, nobody wants to get a hundred thousand dollar bill, even if you're a high income. Sure. So what's going on here is that they made a mistake. Potentially they didn't take your information about your pension and put it into their system. So they send you checks, which you thought were correct, but they were over overpayments. Uh, or, uh, they may be, may, they may be making mistakes about the overpayment. They may actually be underpaying you, but uh, that's why our software is good as well to maximize the tool, maximize my social security because you can check your your benefit is cor- the correct amount that you're not being over or underpaid because probably about a half a million people are being underpaid. Uh, so 
anyway, the system is really dysfunctional, uh, fundamentally, and uh, they they uh, are it's heartless. Yeah. What are the uh, what are the scams that you that you're talking about? Well, Dangerous a scam a scam would be you're a sixty two uh, two year old widow. Your husband just died, for example, and they asked you when you go into the office, would you like to apply for all the benefits that you're el- to which you're eligible? And you say yes. Obviously, that makes this perfect perfect sense. And then they sign you up to take both your retirement benefit and your widow's benefit. And and in that course of checking off a box on a form uh, that you don't really understand about, uh, they deprive you of maybe a quarter of a million dollars. And this is true for your rich listeners as well as your low income listeners. Uh, why could that be the case that they deprive you of money by checking off a box? Well, you th- you may walk out of that office thinking that you ha- are going to start collecting just your widow's benefit or the high, but what, and then at age 70, you go and say, well, I haven't been collecting my retirement benefit. My widow's benefit was higher, but now I'd like to collect my retirement benefit that's 76 higher percent higher than it was at 62. And it's much bigger than the widow's benefit I've been collecting. And then you come to them at age 70 and say, please give me my retirement benefit. They say, oh no, you've been collecting it all, all, all along from age 62. What do you mean? Well, you checked this box. I didn't check anything. Somebody checked it for me. Doesn't matter. You you consented to collecting all the benefits. What they did is give you the larger of the two benefits, and it's not at all in your interest, right? It's a, it, you have an option not to collect your retirement benefit. The Inspector General of Social Security in 2018 uh, investigated this scam and decided that 13, it's probably now about 15 million. Uh, 15 million widows have been, in effect, scammed. They didn't use that language. Uh, defrauded. They didn't use that language either. But that's the that's really the right language of over 100 and right now around 140 million dollars. And uh, Social Security, you have to. I'm the Inspector General. You have to go fix this. This was a 2018 report. Social Security has done nothing. Right. So, so unless you you don't want to be asking Social, Social Security a single question. The only way to get the right answer from Social Security, a correct answer from Social Security, is to ask them nothing. Yeah. You need to really honestly run our software. I don't make any money from my company, just so people realize. I'm not like shilling for my company or or plugging my company for my purposes because I I've had this company for 31 years. I've it owes me money. I've earned nothing. I never oh. take a penny. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's like my way of helping the country and people. But the only way to get the right number is to run that program for 39 bucks, maximize my social security or the maxify.com tool. They'll both tell you what you should be getting and um, then you won't get scammed out. It will tell yeah. you don't take your retirement benefit and your widow's benefit at the same time. Take your widow's benefit now, take your retirement benefit later, or take your retirement benefit now, take your widow's benefit right, later. Right. And this is going to be the increase in your lifetime benefits as a result. So that can keep you safe, but using social, dealing with Social Security will not keep you safe. And an entity which is taking people that are living just on Social Security and saying, you owe us 53000 bucks, and, if, and uh, we're going to cut your check in four weeks, and they do ch- cut your check, and they kick, and they pe- force people onto the street. That's not an entity. That's an American entity. That's a, that's something you would expect from Nazi Germany, not from the America that we grew up with. Right. Um, just shifting. Uh, you know, just uh, want to spend just a, a little bit of time um, talking about uh, money magic, and maybe some of the big points uh, that you may think uh, would be particularly relevant to high paid professionals. I know you've, um, you've mentioned that you think that, you know, some of the, some of the points in there are not something that you would hear from financial advisors or, you know, anybody else giving you uh, opinions well, on retirement. Think about, think about Roth conversions, which many of your, sure. high net, somebody who is, uh, let's say high income might be a high earner who, let's say 64 retires and they're going to wait till 70 to take social security, um, 
they might think that uh, doing a Roth conversion between uh, right now is the thing to do. And it might well be the thing to do, but they have to worry about, uh, am I going to trigger a higher Medicare Part B premiums because I'm going to go into Medicare in two years? But Medicare looks back two years in figuring out its premiums. So the gain from the Roth conversion, in term, you're going to have uh, higher taxes now, but hopefully lower taxes later because you're going to have your you know pay money on IRA withdrawals, pay taxes on those, put the money into uh, that you converted, uh, the, put the money you withdrew net of the taxes at least, uh, mm-hmm. or most of the taxes into the raw into the Roth. And now in the future, your taxes are lower. So you need to be properly calculating your increased taxes now, your increased Medicare Part B called IRMA taxes starting at age 65, because they're going to look at your extra taxable income this year at 64, or actually, yeah, well, 66, because it's two years back. So it's really at 66. Um, You need to have a tool that, and, and also the reduced taxes in the future, that puts everything together, that gets everything right, your financial advisor can't remotely figure this out. Our software can do it, a Maxify tool can do it in a minute. Um, And and so the program, the book is going through a a discussion of all the things involving retirement accounts, but it's just one of many chapters. There's a chapters on how do you think about investing when you're uh, older and no longer have kind of a, a lot of bonds in the form of labor income, which is safe. You know, if you're like, you're, you know, you're a, a physician and if you're practicing, you've got a pretty, pretty steady stream of income for a while. And that's like how holding a bond. So then you can take more risk in terms of holding more of your financial assets into stocks. So right. the question whether you're a stock or a bond is an, a complicated one, but then thinking about how do you evaluate the risk of given how long you're going to work and uh, how much assets you have and how big your social security is and what are any other kinds of uh, safe assets like real estate, perhaps uh, rental income. Now you have to ask yourself, if I invest this way versus that way, if I spend aggressively along the way, uh, what's my upside and downside living standard risk? Uh, And the program, uh, this Maxify tool uh, shows you exactly the, that picture of your living center risk, which is ultimately what we care about. We don't care about how much money we're going to die with. We care about whether we're going to be eating cat food. Right. And that, so there you need to see the downside, the trajectories and the fact that you're facing what's called sequence of return risk along the way, which is as you're taking money out to sustain your living standard, uh, you're going to be, uh, you may be taking out money when the stock market's low in which case, uh, when when it goes back up, which it will, it's going to go up and down. And it's not guaranteed to go up again, but it does uh, vary enormously. You're facing sequence of return risk. So this this is where these trajectories are capturing that. So economics has a completely different way of looking at investing risk, investment risk, and spending risk. You have to realize it's kind of a joint in terms of controlling your downside in the future. If you spend aggressively, it can be worse than investing aggressively because you have less to spend in the future if things crash. Right. So all that, and then also kind of establishing a living standard mm. floor, which again, the software does, and, and having just upside, that's called upside investing. Mm-hmm. So that's funny magic. You know, the reason I use the term magic and the reason why there are rabbits uh, uh, coming out of a uh, out of a hat in the in the book's cover, which is and I think it's probably fifteen bucks on Amazon. It's a paperback version now. Is out uh, is because there's real magic to be made if you listen to economists. Right. If you listen to a financial planner, you're going to get into trouble right. because almost all of them, none of the, very few of them are doing using our software or just do this. Go to your financial planner and say, look, please run run me through your financial professional. Run me through uh, Maxify. Uh, uh, planner and compare that with um, the uh, crappy financial planning software that you're using that's dangerous. Right. And I say it's crappy because I explain in the book exactly how crappy it is. It's all a bait and switch to get you to buy their products right. and put you at risk. It's not really to keep you safe. 
Professor Kotlikoff, uh, the uh, author, again, of Social Security Horror Stories, Protect Yourself from the System and Avoid Clawbacks, and Money Magic, and, as, of course, uh, as referenced here, uh, the creator of MaxiFiPlanner.com. That's uh, Maxi with an I, Fi, F-I, Planner.com. Thanks so much for being on Wealth Formula Podcast. It's a great pleasure. Let me just say one last thing to your listeners, which sure. is that if they send me an email at Kotlikoff at Gmail, I'll get them a, give them a free lifetime subscription to my podcast and newsletter. It's called LarryKotlikoff.substack.com. And they'll you know, be hearing a lot about the economics approach to financial planning, as well as hearing about the broader economy. I, you know, my most recent podcast was with the former economics minister of Chile. Sure. And uh, so there are lots of interesting people talking about the world economy and that might be of great interest. Fantastic. Thanks so much. We'll be right back. Right. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it. One thing I do want to mention is that, you know, there is this chorus, your roadmap to real wealth. And for the last several years now, this has been something that was sold and it was packaged into Wealth Formula Network, which is our you know, online community uh, right now, the online community is uh, closed to new membership. We're just trying to uh, keep that controlled. But the course itself, I've decided just to make free. If you would like that course, just go over to, uh, well, go to wealthformulabanking.com. Uh, that's where it's going to, uh, it's actually one of the places where it will be offered for free. So go and go ahead and grab it. There's a few updates to it but I still think it's got some really good information in it. That's it for me this week on Wealth Formula Podcast. This is Buck Jeffrey signing off. Thank you for listening to the Wealth Formula Podcast. Visit us on the web at wealthformula.com. The information contained in this podcast are opinions, not fact. As always, consult your own financial team before making any investment. See you next time.